Hey, how's it going everybody? Um, in this lecture, I want to talk about APIs or application programming interfaces and um, talk about them, I guess, generically first, just so we have an understanding of the concept of uh, APIs. But I, then I want to proceed and start to build um, or show or demonstrate API support that's built into uh, the Laravel framework. And so, um, yeah, so I want to I want to start with talking about uh, APIs and talk about uh, some of these bulleted items that we have down here. So the first one says, you know, this is how applications, program servers communicate with each other. So that's going to be a big concept that uh, it's important to understand is that APIs are were and are developed so that two entities can communicate with each other in a streamlined uh, fashion. So that's going to be a really important foundational piece. Uh, the next thing is that when we're talking about web APIs, so web specifically, we're talking about data that's often transferred uh, using JSON, and that's an acronym for JavaScript Object Notation. So again, not, not too much of a stretch, but uh, we've seen basically uh, JavaScript data and we pass that around all the time, whether that be in an array or objects or arrays of objects. You know, it's something that we deal with uh, very commonly in web APIs. Um, and then lastly, the communication uh, that we communicate over is HTTP. And again, that's just web stuff, hypertext transfer protocol. Uh, when you type in uh, web addresses in the in the browser URL, it typically says HTTP or HTTPS, and so that's just standard web protocol for communicating. And we communicate with web servers through a web browser using the HTTP protocol, whether you knew it or not. So um, again, that's just a standard web protocol that most or yeah most uh, I guess communication is done over that. So uh, JSON over HTTP is kind of the, the standard we're using for our APIs that we're going to be developing. So let's talk a little bit more about that, how uh, the data flows in typical applications. And so this first one, browser-based, is commonly uh, you or a person sending get, put, post, and delete requests to a web server, right? And this web server could be, you know, Amazon, Amazon.com, Apple.com, uh, Target.com, Walmart.com, you know, that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. And us as consumers of either products or data or information, you know, we're sending these requests over to the web server and the web server then in turn does its processing on the web server and basically builds up what you need, the data and then the HTML back to you uh, into your browser where you're viewing the information. So that's the HTML uh, that gets returned back to you so you can view the information in your browser. Okay, that's pretty standard stuff right there, right? And so up until this, uh, this far, I guess also, we've also been building uh, in Laravel web-based applications that reside on in our web server and we can interact with databases and do all that kind of cool stuff so we've been building those web applications to allow someone else to use a web server that we wrote so that's that's really really cool so i want to take that concept that we've been uh, already working on and doing and you know as far as interacting with a web server for through a browser that's something you've been doing for a long time now so I want to just change it up a little bit and give a new visual to that because now we're going to be dealing with uh, an API server. So notice on the right, uh, I changed it from a web server, which serves HTML, to now we're going to be interacting with an API server, which serves JSON. So that's a little bit different. So these are all examples of API-based interactions. So 
A uh, very common API-based interaction is, uh, here, let me move this over a little bit, is a front-end application, all right? Uh, for example, like React. So React is a, a front-end uh, uh, web framework that allows you to build a highly interactive application and then you're expecting some sort of back-end API server to then for something you can interact with. Okay, so the front-end application is actually sending get, put, post, and delete requests to an API server, and the API server returns JSON so that I can, because um, it, it puts the responsibility of the front-end application to construct the HTML. So the HTML is not constructed on the server. The only thing the server gives back is JSON, and that HTML is then constructed by the front-end developer using their front-end application. Okay, so that's cool. What else? Well, there may be times when an API server interacts with another API server. So a lot of times you'll get, you know, a, a service provided by, and then another server, a API server will interact with that API server. Now, this API server is responsible for Again, it's kind of basically a handoff or like a, like I put here, it's called, it's like a gateway server for other applications. So this API server could be uh, used and interacted by front end applications, mobile and et cetera. So again, not uncommon, right? So API server to API server communication is very common. Um, and then another very common scenario is a mobile application. So iOS application, Android application, uh, that's very like, you know, um, pretty standard that uh, your mobile application, and, and why is that? Well, a lot of times you're interacting with uh, data in databases, with, which can be gigab gigabyte and terabyte amount of data stored in a database server somewhere. You cannot store that on your mobile device, right? It's very limited storage on your mobile devices. And so a mobile application must interact with an API server. And the, it's the API server's job to interact with your database. So from a mobile app, you'll start sending those get post, uh, put post, delete requests to an API server. API server will then interact with your database, uh, construct the proper JSON, and return that back to the mobile application. So you can already see a lot of the benefits here to creating an API server. Uh, basically, it's a it's a managing of the data, but not how the data is viewed, not how the data looks. The how the data is look looks and uh, you know inspected, used, etc. is usually controlled by either the front end application, the mobile application, and also front end mobile applications that might leverage a gateway API server as well. So that all that stuff is handled on the front end. API server is only in charge of interacting with your data. Okay, so that's kind of a huge difference there between an API server and a web server where the web server is in charge of not only interacting with your data, but also um, constructing the HTML um, to properly view how it looks in your browser. So that it's just kind of different purposes, right? So I really wanted to use that as a foundation because um, we've already been building web applications that run on a web server. So now it's time to proceed and learn how Laravel uh, is going to be, uh, how we can use Laravel to write an, uh, an API application. So um, another example is of this is we, we, we've become all too familiar <laughs> with this TV Maze website we've used in several applications that we have written, right? And so if you go to www.tvmaze.com, that's just a front-end application. In fact, I even think I have it open. Yeah, right here, uh, tvmaze.com. And it's just it's just a front-end application. Uh, we're looking at popular shows and, um, you know, what's coming up next and various articles and on and on. Right? This is just a, a web application that uses the data that it gets from its API. 
And so um, over here, notice on the right is the API server, which is at api.tvmaze.com. So that's where the uh, API is produced. And we've also been, I guess, technically, you know, in our uh, 233 Laravel application, we we have just technically been, if I want to be particular here, we haven't been doing any put, post, or delete actions, but we have been reading from the API. So I'll leave that there. We've been asking or getting data from the API server. It returns back JSON, and then we format it and make it look pretty in our Laravel application. So that's just this is just another example of, of you've all been using an API server whether you knew it or not. And tvmaze.com is an example of an application that uses its own API server. Okay, so that's a real world thing right there. And so depending on if uh, when you join a web team, there's so many roles on a team. And I've, I've been part of both roles, right? I've been part of uh, the front end application where I, I, I consume and interact with an API, but I just interact with JSON and I make it look uh, make it look good. Uh, I can also send get uh, put post uh, delete requests from my front end server to the API server. So that's a role. Another role is you might not touch the front end, but you're a back end developer working on APIs. So you're the one uh, creating the API server where you receive data requests, uh, CRUD get put post delete requests from a front end validate it. Maybe I need to look up something in the database. Maybe I need to update the database. And then I construct JSON and send that back to a front end developer. And so that's another role you may play. So it just depends, you know, what a, a web team needs, but there's all sorts of roles that, uh, that can be fulfilled on a web team. So that's just an example. And so again, uh, Laravel uh, Web Framework is kind of does it all, right? We can, it's a web server we, where we can serve uh, traditional HTML, but can also be an API server. And that's really where uh, I want to make sure that you're aware of that, that um, we want to jump into Laravel next and talk about how uh, Laravel can provide these API server uh, pieces and functionality. So, Let's go ahead and jump over to a Laravel application that I have already up and running. And I have a, a friend application that I've used in some, some previous examples. So if I open up friend here, this shouldn't be too, uh, too, you know, too exciting. I have a, a first name, a last name and an age. Um, what else? I have a migration, which kind of basically shows, yeah, I'm, I got my ID, first, last name, age, and timestamps. So that is the, that is, those are the fields of my friend model and more my friend's table if I'm talking about the database. Um, what else here? Cedars. Yeah, I think I have a database, database cedar where um, I have a factory that will create 20 of them for me. And that doesn't look too exciting either, but I just, I'm just using um, Faker for all of this. So first name, last name, and a number between 20 and 100 for my age. So again, this is stuff that we've looked at already in the past. And um, yeah, that's basically where this application is for now. And then I wanted to show you in the table the database here. It's, it's getting bigger. I don't know. Okay. Oh, it does. Anyway, I've seeded 20, uh, 20 friends, and you can see just some random first names and last names and random ages. So you can see the data is all there, and we also have a foundation for building what we need. Um, you know, all the all the database set, the database setup, the model. Got some seeding going on. I have, but but remember, we are going to be creating a, an API access to the data. So 
We don't, we're not using any um, web-based type. We don't have any blade templates. We don't have any, uh, you don't have any RESTful controllers. Uh, what else? We don't have a, we don't have any uh, um, web.php. We have no routes in here. Like, wow, okay, that's interesting. So remember, we're not doing anything web or HTML based. It's all gonna be JSON based. Okay, so that's gonna be a really big thing here. And so before we go in and I start writing some code, I wanna talk a little bit about a technique we're gonna be doing um, called the command pattern. Okay, so command pattern, maybe if I come back and take some notes here. Um, command pattern. Command pattern is going to be a way for us to write APIs in a clean fashion. So let me. So, what are some observations we can make about a command pattern? Well, um, again, it's all um, each um, CRUD or REST full action is organized into a class, okay? So for example, um, if I want to get all friends, right? And I want you to make a comparison and contrast, right? A comparison and contrast to um, how we organized our CRUD actions in a web application. So in a web application, we would have a big controller, we'd have index to show all friends um, or all products or all whatever. And then we'd have a show action to show only one item, right? And then we'd have, um, and then we'd have a create action to display like a web form. We'd have a store action to actually provide a place for the form to save to. We'd have an edit action to provide a form so that you can edit a particular thing. And then if to actually update or submit that form, it would go to an update action. And then we'd have a destroy action if we wanted to delete anything. And remember that was all inside one file, one controller. And what, what ends up happening over time is that controller starts to get very, very large. Okay. And there's, it starts to get hard to navigate the size of that controller. So uh, what's different about the command pattern? It says, okay, I'm gonna take your index action, put it into its own file, into its own class. I'm gonna take the show action, put that into its own file, into its own class. So each action gets its, its, its own class, right? Into a class. So each action gets its own class, okay? You know, so, um, in its own file and class, um, get a friend in its own file and class and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So that's kind of the difference there. And, and one pain that it relieves, right? Is that one file, that one controller with all code in it, it starts to get lengthy and complicated and, and so on. So we're trying to avoid uh, code complexity, right? And we're also trying to put uh, each file class has its own responsibility. So that way it's very focused. So let's say you have a team of developers working together and if, you know, uh, you can easily send them to one, you know, if somebody needs to make a change or make a suggestion or add some functionality to it, they know exactly where to go. They're going to this one file and they know if they write code in this one file, it's not going to impact all the code in all the other files. So it's some, some nice isolation and responsibility. So uh, definitely some benefits there. Uh, furthermore, I also want to keep you um, students up to date on what's happening in the industry. Okay. 
the last two projects I've worked on in the last three years have used this command pattern, right? And before then, it was traditional, one big controller, lots of actions inside. That's just kind of how it was. But uh, I've seen in, in my last two projects personally, the use of this command pattern. And so I want to pass that on to you that uh, this is an example of, of something you may see in the industry. You may very well continue to see the controller, you know, one, con uh, one controller, one file, many actions. And you may continue to see that in industry as well because it's like a legacy pattern. It's been around for a long time. And I wouldn't be surprised if you saw that. And, and, and that's okay too, right? Uh, each team makes their own decision over the over time and whatever works for them is what works for them but I just want to expose you to this command pattern because it's something I've been using on on projects lately and I want to make sure at least you know what it is and that's what we're going to be using in this in this class uh, in this um, demonstration of the code as well okay cool cool so um, I guess what I want to show you um, um, next is how to implement this command pattern within Laravel because that's going to get us started right away with writing, um, you know, our first what's called API endpoint. And so, what do I mean by endpoint? Well, let's let's go back and use the TV Maze example, right? So we have our web application that leverages all the API stuff it's it's uh, providing itself. But if I go to the API documentation, right? If all these uh, what are called endpoints or you know functionality endpoints are here for you and for us to leverage. And so each, when I say endpoint, each unique URL would be an, what's called an API endpoint, right? That's a place you're gonna be retrieving or interacting with that certain URL. So I'll either say URL or endpoint, and you can see it's just very common vernacular within API usage, right? The most common use case for this endpoint, right? So endpoint is just a, a terminology used to mean a, a unique URL used um, within an API. Uh, and you, you can see here that we have dozens of endpoints that are used uh, for, TV, for the TV uh, Maze API. Okay, but yeah, that's this quick way that I remember it. Endpoint means a unique URL. That's part of an API. All right, and there's lots of them, right? Okay, cool. So I think with that background, we can start to jump into an example and start building out our friends API uh, piece by piece. And remember, the pieces we want to handle, right, are the CRUD actions. So we want to be able to create a friend. We want to be able to read a list of friends and also access one friend. We want to be able to update a friend and we want to be able to delete a friend. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and start walking through that. And I will show you some things along the way. So let's go back to the server. I believe I need to start the server. Um, so PHP artisan serve. And let me go back here. I think I left the, the home page up, so that should come up. Yeah, cool. Yes, yeah, so if I go back to the route API or web. Oh, I was already open. Yeah, we have the uh, forward slash going to the welcome page. So yeah, that, that route's still there, so that's fine. But the next thing I want to do is start to... Um, build out the, the one endpoint. So let me make sure I'm over here, get another, get another terminal going. Okay, get that going. Okay, so the way we generate a command in uh, Laravel they give us basically a, actually a tool to do that. So when I say a command, I'm talking about that single file, single class command code that we're gonna be using for each RESTful CRUD action in our application. Uh, let me show you real quick the reference for that. Um, 
over if you go to the laravel.com if i go to the very top here and do a search for uh, controllers right notice there's an item here called single action controller so that's what i'm talking about the single action controller and it has a class uh, an extends controller just like our, our other restful controllers but it has a function called invoke so invoke is a special function built into laravel so that's not something you know that's something we can't change the name of that all all we know is that when this um, class is called it'll call this invoke function so um, all you need to know is all your code is going to go inside of there and then you're good um, we can then go to our routes file uh, use that class bring that into our file and then set up a route and a route to that class right so we we specify here you know whether it's a post or a get or a delete or whatever right so that goes there the route we want to access on the api endpoint and then our class name right and so there's an easy way to do this uh, php gives us a, a generator so it's php artisan make controller the name of our command and then you have to put this dash dash invocable on the end of it and then that'll generate the um the uh the class that we need to uh, start writing for our, our class there so um cool so let's go ahead and do that for our very first one the very first endpoint i want to work on is a list of all the friends or getting all the friends uh in json format so i want to take this copy this to our terminal and I'm, I'm obviously going to change the name but the convention that we're going to be following is we're going to be doing um a singular or plural of our our model name so our model name is friend right that's the singular version that represents a friend and then I'm getting a list of friends. Um, so uh, I'll be naming this one uh, friends. So that'll be plural. And then I will put be putting the um, rest action um, or the restful, you know, resourceful action at, at the end of this here. So this is going to be a get. Okay. And so you'll see as we move further, I'll be doing friend get and friend post and friend put and friend delete right those are ones we can already know i already know we're going to be doing those so i might even go ahead and, and generate some of those um no i'll wait but i'll just do it one at a time but you'll start to get the pattern as we move forward so let me go ahead and generate this and see what happens Okay, so generate successfully. Notice it even tells you where it is. App, HTTP, controllers, friends, get. So I should be able to go. Yep, there it is right here. And it created the friends get uh, class name for me. And also this invoke thing that I put all my code inside of here. All right. So <clears throat> that's cool. How do I know this thing is even going to work? Well, I need to do another thing. If you're making a checklist of things to do, uh, you want to create your controller. The next thing you want to do is register that controller in your route. Okay. So to register this controller in your route, you want to go not to the web.php. This is, remember, this is where all of our web HTML blade uh, routes go we want to go now we get to leverage this api routes and this is the part um, where i had mentioned laravel supports building apis so it already gives you an uh, api.php route file so this is very cool and so i want to register this route first i need to use um Yep, my um, controller. So I need to reference app HTTP controllers friends get. So I need to bring that into this file. 
And then I need to write a route, get, right, friends, and then I want to reference my friends get class. Like that. Okay. So that allows us to uh, register this route. Now, if I try to go to this route, um, it's kind of a quick way I can do it here real quick. Let me see if this works. <laughs> Oops, this may backfire on me. Uh, another thing I want you to observe is that everything now, since it's inside this API.php file, when you reference the endpoint, it's going to be under this API. Laravel just does that for you automatically. All right, so that's an easy one to forget, but make a note right now that anything we put inside this API.php file when we reference the, reference the endpoint, it's going to be underneath that API uh, URL path. Okay, so now the route get slash friends. This might blow up, but I just want to see what it does. It did absolutely nothing. <laughs> okay, um, let me see if I can get it to do something though. Um, friends get. Let's see if I can get it to um, at least. Give back some data, and the way we do that is we can do a uh, response uh, JSON. Um, you know, I don't know. Um, should be able to just do hello data from friends, something like that. Um, We'll see how that goes. I may be missing something else, but let's try it again. We'll do run this. This curl command is just a way to, to call an API endpoint very quickly. I don't even know if it's on Windows, but I know like a Unix, Linux, Mac, it, this curl command is supported. But don't get too tied to this curl command because I'm going to show you a better way to call your APIs uh, here in a minute. Uh, nope, that didn't work either. So, folk friends controller. Let me see if I need to restart my server. And then see if that works now. Nope. So that didn't work either. Oh, I just noticed I need to add a return here because it's the last item of the function. So I need to have a return keyword, obvi uh, obviously there to return some data. So let's go ahead and do this again. Nice, data from friends. Okay, that's looking better. All right, so with that in mind, before we get too far into code, I do want to show you a better way of interacting with your API. And so I want to show you another industry tool very commonly used. It's called Postman. And so instead of running these curl commands, which, yeah, works great for quick testing, we can use a tool called Postman. APIs. And you're going to want to go ahead and I don't think you have to sign up. I don't think it hurts anything, but you're going to want to at least uh, download Postman. Yep. So download for your particular operating system. And this is what I will be using to demonstrate uh, all the work we're going to do in our APIs here. So um, just again, just wanted to show you where to go get it. So go ahead and do that. And I already have mine open. And I'm going to start to build um, a blank collection. And this will be for our friends API. OK. And so that's basically like a folder. And then underneath the folder, I'm going to have a bunch of um, API requests. And so let me show you again, show you how to build that out. So I might as well go ahead and add. A request and it even tells you right here add a request to start working so I'm gonna add a request and I'm gonna call it uh, friends you know, 
get all, you know, just you can identify that however you want. And I'm going to be using the the uh, get, you know, uh, action. And then I'm going to be going to uh, HTTP colon local host 8000 slash API slash friends. Don't forget the API. And that's basically the same URL that we did right here when I did curl. I did localhost 8000 slash API slash friends. And I should see this data being returned. So let's, let's try that out. So now I can just hit the send button. Actually, I'll save it first. Hit send. And there it is. Look at that data with data from friends. Um, I also forgot to show you earlier that I have the TV Maze API. I have a couple requests set up here. So I have a show episode list. So I'm going to api.tvmaze.com slash shows slash one slash episodes. Hit send on that. And look at that, I'm getting all the data we can analyze. So that's, that's really cool. There's another one I added called Showcast, right? And so this goes to api.tvmaze.com slash shows slash one slash cast. Hit send. And there I'm getting all the JSON data. And we've seen this data before and we've had to convert that or map that from JSON into like PHP classes, right? or PHP associative arrays. So we've seen this data a lot. And, um, you know, we're used to seeing image with a medium and an original and parsing that out. So I know you've seen this data a lot. You've interacted with this data a lot, uh, whether you liked it or not. <laughs> uh, it's, the same, it's the same deal though. So it's kind of cool that we can use this Postman tool to pretty quickly start interacting with an API. And, you know, I could go through and, and um, uh, let's see, right? I could go through and do a bunch of these other ones that um, we can use to interact with this API as well. So I don't know, heck, might as well do one more. Let's look at, um, how about streaming schedule? Um, well, that date's not quite right. How about, um, come on. Episode guest cast. Yeah, let's, let's try that. So I'm going to grab this endpoint URL, copy that. And this is episode guest cast. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and add a request. And this is uh, episode guest cast. And I'm going to paste that URL in here. And then I should be able just to send and get a response. So there it is. Very cool, huh? I like it. Uh, you can look at different ways to view the data. So raw, preview, uh, visualize. I'm not sure what that is, but looks like I don't use it. So I'll go back to pretty. Pretty JSON, and there's the data for that particular one. All right, so back to our friends API. Not only, you know, you can see how it works for existing APIs, I can start to build out these endpoints and these requests for my own APIs. And this will serve as documentation, not only for you, but for your team as well. So your team knows. Remember what I was talking about? You could be a front-end developer or a back-end developer. Well, the whole team needs to know the um, API endpoints, so they know how to either provide the endpoints or retrieve data from the endpoints if you're a front-end developer. So for this one, we have localhost API slash friends, which gives us data with data from friends. And that's just the start. Obviously, that's not the real data, but it's a kind of a good way to test that your endpoint even exists, right? If your endpoint didn't exist, I can make something up here that doesn't exist, like foo. And hit send, and I get I get uh, Laravel just sends me an error message, right? This if you ever see this big long HTML page with this is basically Laravel's error message for not knowing what what's going on. In fact, 
If you go down, you can see it's a 404 not found. So it doesn't, it doesn't even exist. So I'll go back to friends. Friend, that does exist. Excellent. Okay, so with that in mind, let's, let's see what we can do now. If I go back to here. So we're just returning the response, but what do we really wanna do? We wanna get all the friends from the database table and then we want to uh, uh, return that from this function. And so we've done that before, right? We've done that before. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring in um, my friend model class here. And then I get to call friends equals friend.all. And then I get to construct some data here how I want to. So this. This very commonly is something I'll stick, in, stick into an associative array like this. I'll give it a key like friends and then reference the friends data that I wanna to pass to the endpoint. Now this is pretty good, right? But there's also a very, another very common thing that we need to do in our APIs. And we need to provide um, HT, what are called HTTP status messages. And so what that looks like, because it's a standard, I can do a search for this. So if you're ever doubting what you can do here for what, what message do I send, you can always do a search for HTTP status messages. Okay. And there's lots of documentation on these, what are called status messages or status codes. And if I go here, you can see there's a category of messages, right? So 100 to 199 are informational. 200 to 299 is success responses. 300 to 399 are redirect messages. 400 to 499 are some sort of uh, error where the user is interacting with your API incorrectly. And then 500 error messages are errors that uh, are, are, <clears throat> are given if there's actually something wrong on the server. So maybe there's some sort of miscommunication with the database or miscommunication with, an, with another API. Something's wrong on the server. So these we can look up and there's a lot of them. So keep that in mind. I will have a few that I use, you know, 200 for like a success, uh, 400 if I'm not getting correct information from the user uh, are very, very common ones that I use. So that's really cool. Laravel has some built in ones. And so I'm going to bring in, I mean, actually I can do, let me show you, let me show you something. Okay. So 200, right? That's assuming everything is cool. So I'm going to get all the friends and return those to my API endpoint as JSON, right? We're overlooking one little thing here. Laravel, like I, like I said, supports building APIs. We get to use this response JSON call and it converts all of the PHP uh, code into JSON for us. So I don't wanna overlook, like that's really cool. We don't have to map over and do a conversion and do any crazy stuff. Just with one line of code, Laravel handles that conversion between PHP and JSON. So that's really cool. And I'm going to pass in this 200 saying, this is a successful request. Go ahead and send the data to the endpoint. So let's go back to Postman and test this out. I'm going to go ahead and hit send. And lo and behold, we get this JSON formatted data. So we have friends, which references an array of all the friends in our database. So again, how do I confirm that? Well, the first record in this with an ID of one is Wilhelm Cassine, age 97. Let's go check our database. So I'm gonna go look in my database tool and look at the first record, which is uh, Wilhelm Cassine at 97 years old. So it looks like we are retrieving the data correctly from our database table. Um, this is amazing. And another thing, it's also a change. Let me go back. It's a change in mindset, right? It's a change in mindset because we are so used. We are so used to 
writing web pages that retrieve data, format the HTML in some sort of blade template, and send back send that back as HTML to the to a user. No, no, no. This is a different context altogether, right? This is a different context altogether. This is an API server, which is all it's doing is is returning JSON to whichever client needs it, and it's up to the client to make the data look like it should. So again, I don't mind reviewing that uh, in the middle of looking at what we're doing. Okay, fun, fun, fun. Uh, I do want to tweak this a little bit. What if we want to do a little bit of uh, filtering of the data? We can do some, some filtering of the data just by taking in some request parameters and then changing up our query a little bit. Because what I'm what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to do something like this, like sort by age and uh, direction ascending or descending. That's kind of what I'm hoping to do, right? And this shouldn't do anything because I haven't done anything. But this is what I want to support. I want to be able to sort the data de uh, depending on the field that I use. So how do I do that, right? The sort by is the key and the direction is the key. Uh, as And it's kind of cool, Postman organizes that for you down here. So if I wanted to add something else like, um, you know, another cool key, um, hello, whatever, it automatically puts it in the query string and organizes it down here in a table for you. So I think that's pretty cool too. Uh, I don't need this third one, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. Okay. So I do wanna leverage that. What, what does that look like? Well, we've done some things like this before in our code to where um, we can grab the sort by variable from the request object. Well, where's the request object come from? Uh, that comes in by sort by, um, and if, again, if that's not there, we can just default to first name. But this request is, is passed in automatically right here. And that tells us everything we need to know about the request, right? Where it's coming from, all the query parameters that are coming through, and we're able to retrieve those from the request. And so the, when I say, remember, the query parameter is grabbing this data from what's called the query string, right? That's everything after the question mark, all these name or these key value pairs. That's the query string. Okay, uh, so there's that. And then there's also the direction. And if that's not there, then we yeah, will just default to ASC. And then now we have um, we have this data, and all we need to do now is just update our uh, query. Instead of just grabbing them all, we're going to do an order by, and we're just going to do uh, sort by and direction, and then we want to get those values uh, here. Hopefully, I typed that incorrectly. Yeah, that should that should be it. So that's kind of cool, right? This allows us to um, to get some query string parameters and do some fancy things with our sort or with our uh, query. Um, so let's try this out. So send. We're sorting by age ascending. And look at that age: 20, 22, 22, 25. 27. So let's go descending on that. Ninety-seven, ninety-five, ninety-four, ninety-one. So it looks like that's working as well. So now we can start playing around. Try first name. First name descending. So Wilhelm, Seamus, Rocchio, Pauline, Nicholas. Kirsten, Jace, that looks like that's working. Last name. Let's 
So last name descending, Walter Vaughn, Russell, Rohan, Rohan, Parker, McLaughlin, Koss. So it looks like that's working as well. So cool, just by adding some, some query string values and being able to, to access those in our code, we just uh, made our friends list a lot more robust and powerful. Now, what happens if I if uh, somebody types in something wrong? So instead of last name, I put fast name and send. Okay, boom. We get an error. It says uh, unknown, calm, fast name in the order clause. Uh-oh, that's not cool. Well, this error here is something we do not want to display to uh, the clients that are using our endpoint. We want to at least give them something, uh, like number one, at least it needs to be in JSON. Number two, it, it just needs to be some sort of error message. And we can get crazy with our error messages. We can get as detailed as we want, uh, but we can also get, um, you know, at least they uh, give them some information so they know they need to look at something in their query. So how might, um, how might we resolve this? Well, one way to quickly resolve this is to use what's called a try catch. And what that means, it says, go ahead and try this piece of code, right? And if that works, great. If it doesn't work, then we want to use um, what's called a catch. And a catch says, hey, I want you to catch this exception and respond with some sort of message, you know, error retrieving friends. And notice we already give them a 500. And the 500, if you remember, um, is something that it's an error that happens on the server. So I'm actually going to change this to a 400 because what I want to designate is that it's not a 500. There's no, there's not an error on the server. It's not something wrong with my server. It's actually you typed in the query string parameter incorrectly. 400 errors are more user errors. 500 errors are server errors. So I'm gonna I'm gonna categorize this as a user error, okay, and make it a 400. And so um, I also may say something like, "Please check you are using correct field names." Okay. So now let's see what happens. If I go back to Postman, fast name is still in there, so it's a user error. I'm gonna hit send. This time it says, um, error, retrieving friends, please check you are using the correct field names. So at least we get to point them in the right direction. All right. Um, also notice we have right here 400 bad requests. Um, the request cannot be fulfilled due to bad syntax. So again, the bad syntax is incorrect query string usage. Um, another thing that I like in my code is, yeah, 200 is great, 400 is great, but I, uh, Laravel also provides a, some really friendly names for those. And so instead of... Um, Let's see, do I have my response? Yeah, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring in um, a library called response. And again, Laravel provides that. And instead of 200, I can do response colon colon HTTP okay. And that's the same thing as a 200. So it, instead of putting these magic numbers in there like 200 or 400 or 500, um, I prefer more readable code that may be more meaningful to a team of developers, not just me. So I love seeing descriptive names, des descriptive constants for uh, these magic values like 200 and 400 and 500. So I use HTTP OK for 200. And then I use um, uh, response. Um, <clears throat> HTTP bad response. Oh, I'm getting over there. Um, 
and that'll do the correct uh, 400 air for me. So nothing should really change here, but it was more of just kind of a FYI on the types of air messages or uh, air codes that I like to pass pass forward. So let's go ahead and, and clean this up. Let's go back to last name and that should still work. And it does. So yeah, things are looking good. I can uh, uncomment these and go back to just all friends, the default standard list, or I can add these back in. Beautiful, okay. So I think, yeah, this is coming together really nicely. Um, just a, a quick uh, review. I'm going to um, go ahead and take a break here. And we'll come back and finish the rest of the actions in, an, in a subsequent lecture. But in quick review, before I let you go, uh, we are now building APIs. So data, JSON data over HTTP, I can say that, with all sorts of front end purposes, as you see on the left. And uh, Laravel gives us a framework to do all that. We're using the command pattern to organize and structure our code so that each file and class represents one action. And then um, we're using um, that uh, single controller uh, this command here to generate this invocable flag here creates a single action controller for us which is our way of of doing the command pattern in laravel um, we've and we've also learned how to start using postman to make api calls for us so it's a very nice interface and it's also used in the industry as well so you're going to want to become uh, familiar with this tool and it's a very powerful tool for for this uh, api work so uh, for now, we just have a, uh, an API for getting all of our friends and we can filter on that. We can sort uh, those friends by different parameters. Yeah, cool. So and that's, that's basically where we're at for now. And so I will be adding more routes for, um, for you know, showing one friend uh, create updating and deleting uh, a friend. So we will be getting that into the next uh, next lecture.